We got a very special guest in the house, you know what I'm saying? And um, he's been here before. And a beautiful thing about this man, you know, when he first came through, he showed us a lot of love. Not just a little bit of love, he showed us a lot of love. And I'm going to say for one, because he didn't have to do it. Because we were nowhere near where we needed to be to get you to sit down with us. But he came and sat down with us still. Yeah. So that's love. So I'm going to give you a shout out for that. But um, outside of that, he told us when he first came and sat down, he was like, yo, y'all stay on your shit, stay grinding, and it's going to get bigger than you could imagine. And it ain't there yet, but I'm telling you, we on the motherfucking way. So shine moment and shout out to you for having that vision, man. I love people with that. 1,000%, bro. How you doing, though? Sincerely, Collins. I'm doing great, man. I'm doing amazing. And and everything I said I meant, because y'all do this shit with a passion, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, y'all do this shit like, like all the big ones do their shit, you know what I mean? And, and that's what we need in Phoenix, people to make... People to make these uh, these Phoenix fans and this Phoenix culture pop make these make these people uh, uh, look at us like Drakes, like Lil Wayne's, mm -hmm. like yeah. you know what I'm saying. Like people need to like, people need to have this culture and these and, and people like y'all, mm -hmm. you know, to give them the scoop to make them care. You mm -hmm. know what I'm yeah. saying? Like to give like they don't get the introspective look in our lives because our shit's not pumped into their veins every fucking five years. Yeah. You know what I mean? So nah. shout out to y'all man. Like y'all like y'all shining bro. Man, I appreciate yeah. that wholeheartedly bro. But, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. I wanna keep giving oh and Pat was at the first one. Oh yeah I was. I was yeah. there. I was there. Okay. You know I mean? All right. So yeah, let me say I mean. this though bro. Cause you really didn't have to do it at all. And that's that's just truth be told. But um so since then just in your personal life and maybe because we're gonna get to the music and all that how you been doing since then man because it's been what a year and like what, four months since we did that one word um i've been great bro i've been great just um just been executing mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's been it's been a couple of years in the making two and a half to be exact um years in the making since i last dropped an album mm -hmm. and um i didn't realize how i didn't realize how much like my music is my life mm -hmm. until I went two and a half years without dropping an album. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, um, but it was good though. It was really good for me because um, I was able to just like step back and see some things in a different way than I, than I saw them before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And understand some shit that was going on and how, and, and, and change my perception on some things. Shy moment. Um, learning, learning a lot of stuff. Um, and, and really preparing for this moment because it's a big moment for me right now. Like, I just have so much music that's been, it's been done that we've just been trying to figure out exactly how to execute. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and because the music's important, man. Like, you know, like what we're doing is, it's not no like bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Like, like this is my, I was talking to Willie uh, a couple of days ago and we were just talking about like, this is modern day wizardry. You know what, yeah. what I'm saying? Like this is like, we're, we're creating with our words out here and shit. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So like, Everything that we do, like even when you just like look back at all this, like any song that I've made, like has then like affected my life, and I've went on to you know what I mean, yeah. then evolve as a person based off of like where I was with my art at that time, mm -hmm. and then I can like look at it now and reflect on that, yeah, and be yeah. like holy, like damn, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean that's that's where I've been, and and now October first with sincerely two produced by um produced by Q the legend. He shine moment. I, I can't even express how talented that man is. Mm -hmm. Like that man is so talented. He um he's actually the one like he's the one to talk to about the Martin Talks thing because he he surprised me with those things. I need that. You know what I'm saying? Like he like me. I'm like even more than a rapper. Like this this album is made to show show like that I I know the art. Like you know what I'm saying? This this album is is to is to just kind of like wake people up to. Sincerely Collins and the skill and the story and like why they should tune in. You know yeah, what I'm saying? absolutely. And and also just to like shut people up like who don't really know me from anything except for the radio. Yeah, you know I what like I'm that. So um, you got to get like that sometimes. Yeah, you man, know what I mean? you have to. But also shout out to Bootleg Kev too. He um he hosted the album. He's talking shit all over the album. So you know that's my guy. That's my brother. No matter what. So I fuck with him heavy and and he he uh, agreed to. To, to show some love to the project mm -hmm. and um, yeah man it's, it's only right because we started this shit together you know what I'm saying yeah we started this up. shit together Phoenix uh, shit, man. four years yeah. ago 
Yeah. And I don't really know Bootleg like that at all, but it's Phoenix shit, you know, because yeah. I know him from the radio, you know what I'm saying? But um, mm -hmm. what I do want to say, because, you know, this mostly just kind of about where you've been at in life, mostly. I don't want to get too much into the music right now. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I'm a father. Yeah. But a father of daughters, you know, and I see you got baby girl and you post her sometimes. She really exuber and stuff. So how are things with, with, you know, being a father and fatherhood going for you? Man, I'll, she's eight, bro. Like, that's... Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. It's like weird, man. Oh my goodness. But at the same time, I remember her being two, three years old. Okay, first I remember her being one and me being like, man, I cannot wait till I can talk to you. Yeah. Like, yeah. when I can talk to you, it's over. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're gonna be like, you're gonna be the shit. Like, yeah. When, when you can speak to me and I can tell you the stuff that I've picked up on this planet, like, and then she became three and she was everything that I ever asked for and everything that I ever thought. Shy moment. And then when she's three, I'm like, man, I can't wait till you're eight. Yeah. And I can put you on my song. Now you want her to slow down. Well, well, hold on, hold on. I can't wait till you're eight and I can put you on my songs and I can, and I can have you on our records and we can make your album mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And we was doing that when she was five. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So then at five, it's like, man, I can't wait until you can learn and understand the art and the craft of some of these things so you can write and you can and now she's eight years old and she's doing those things and it's like shine moment it's crazy man like I, did you see the youtube i mean not the youtube the uh instagram video of her singing that i posted was it how recent was it it was like very recent then i definitely sing it because it most of the stuff I've seen was older, but I just went back and started running back through your stuff, obviously, because I've been yeah. things, so I'm sure I've seen it. I don't know what song it was. But. She was singing, um, she was singing Bruno Mars, and she was, she just be killing it. Like, she was killing it. And I, I posted it because it was just so, it was just so amazing to see mm -hmm. that, like, my influence, I couldn't sing worth a shit, like, when I was her age until mm -hmm. I was 20 two or 23 like yeah. I had to work at it like a mm -hmm. lot you know what I mean and um and her mom can't sing worth the shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah she'll shout admit, out to you she'll admit, she'll admit that she could do she could do a lot of other things good but singing is not one of them <laughs> and um so it's like where does that come from that comes from our influence mm -hmm. you know what I mean that comes from what we what we taught her and put around her for her to learn how to do that so she's opened up her like there's things that people have to learn that are second nature to her from just watching you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's like she doesn't have to think about breathing. She doesn't have to think about voice control. She doesn't have to think about cadence and rhythm. Like yeah. she just, she's, it, she knows it. Like she just, she's a natural. She's of it. She got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So even dancing, like, oh, like what's the new dance, Delilah? Like, oh, she, let me watch it real quick and then I'll show you. Like, you know what I mean? like in 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's, it's amazing to watch, man. And, and, even though the information era is a little bit spooky, um, it's still with, as long as we raise our kids with compassion, um, it'll be for the better and not for the worse. Yeah, no, and I'm glad you said that because the fact that it is a little bit spooky means that it's a lot of light mm -hmm. behind it also. Mm -hmm. You just gotta be able to find it. But um, one thing I did wanna ask you because being a son who pretty much grew up without a mother, you know what I mean? Does it make you feel like I have to go even harder to build this relationship with my daughter, or is it just like regular father-daughter type stuff, or is it like you feel like you gotta go the extra mile at times? I think subconsciously I, I feel that way. Yeah. I think that sometimes like, I think sometimes even even my daughter's mom like, is like, like yo, like why are you exhausting yourself? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like why are you like, like, in, like in, not, emotionally and mentally and strategically mm -hmm. like you know what i'm saying like just like why are you exhausting yourself over over like life perfection and over you know how how your daughter's raised and how she ends up and blah 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 and i know i can't she control don't understand it. i know yeah. i can't control it mm -hmm. but you can direct it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and i just want to make sure that if if I'm put on this earth and I have my own special kind of influence, my kids, I'm going to pass the influence that I see to be right and correct. I'm going to pass that type of influence to my child. You know what I mean? Shine so, moment. So, um, yeah, I, mean, I just, I guess I just feel it's a responsibility and 
and, and you said it like you know growing up without parents and stuff yeah. and like just and just realizing like how important that is mm -hmm. and just like she can she'll never have to she'll never have to deal with some emotions that, mm -hmm. I've, that I've dealt with yeah. and like that alone is like <sighs> Yeah. And it's yeah, I mean, opposites, but I feel like, and the reason I asked the question that way, because I feel like a son bonds with his mother mm -hmm. almost the same way a daughter bonds with her father. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why I asked it that way. See, Pat, though, while we talking personally, you got any cool, or Corey P. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so being a rapper, you got any personal life questions for my man? Personal life, um, one that I feel like, you know, from musician to musician, mm -hmm. um, I just want to see like where does your most like inspirations come from when you're creating a track or how do you and your producer vibe just the creative process of how you come up with you know what you come up with well I have I have a few producers um, and we all have techniques and styles that we use mm -hmm. um, so for instance with Q uh, this was like excuse me this was like a um a batch of of beats that just kind of were unused yeah and i was in this wanting to rap mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. in my life you know what i'm saying we were about to, we already had gotham ready which will, which will drop later this year um we already had um we have like five albums like ready to go and before we started everything and got too serious with everything, I was just getting so antsy and everybody was getting so antsy and it was just like, yo, let's drop some shit, please. Like, let's just drop some shit. Like, I can't keep waiting and waiting and waiting. And so we were like, we just, we just finished the, uh, we just finished up the, um, the strategy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? F and, and put together a plan and just decided to just roll it out. And, um, Q, he kind of, he kind of is like having like a Just Blaze yeah. and a, Hey, that's a sign moment. Yeah, and a, already. And a Kanye and a Swiss Beats. There's one more, hold on. He must use the NPC then. No, bro. No? You giving him a lot of love right now. Yeah. But this is what, but when you hear I mean, the album, you'll understand. Okay. Because like, the, like, Here's the thing, like this is high quality music. Like this yeah. is like upper echelon music. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like this, like if you listen to it, like it's like it sounds like a moment. Like you know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. It encapsulates a moment. You know, and and that is is largely due to this man's production. You yeah. know what I mean? So like well, I shine moment. I, I, I like, shine that on him. Um, but yeah, man, he's like having all those people just at your fingertips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so it was just like, yo, Q, send me, send me the folder. Like, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? I, and, and eight out of 20 of them I rapped on and we just yeah. decided to throw it together. Goddamn, that's 40%. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh -huh. that's, that's good. good. So, yeah. <laughs> but then 40% is a good two point shooter. <laughs> but then, the, then we have this whole other creative process because he's also like, like a Pharrell or a Timberland. Oh, okay. And he can do this like radio, like well, I crazy mean, new, Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. I was just gonna ask. Like, pretty much, my question was more directed to like, what does he use to make his beats? Is it like an NPC? Because you know, like, all of those. No, he uses he uses FL. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No, that's that's that's. We're living in 2018, bro. Yeah. Like, he uses yeah. FL Studio. Yeah. And he sounds like no ID. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. And you know how to you know just like kind of tweak things on mm -hmm. on FL. That's dope. I got a quick question for Tyler before we get back to my man Collins. Go ahead. Talk to us about this uh, pin, and how do I know when it runs out? The weed's gonna be out of it by the time it runs out. You'll see it. Oh, the <laughs> color, the color yeah, will be gone. It's all the way full. Okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I want to know. Shout out to Tyler and Collins for bringing your boy to Pure Earth Pin. Yeah, shout out to Pure. I just had to My give sponsors. that a little plug. Oh, even better. See. Yeah. All right, but um, all right, Collins. So you know this podcast shit at all times. So yeah. since we while we talking about the personal shit, you got a girl. No. How the hoes treating you nowadays since you popping a little more? Honestly, there's no hoes. You a lie. 
No, I'm dead. I'm dead ass serious. Somebody's gonna be mad at yeah. this interview, huh? That's what's, that's gonna, what's yeah, going on. That's the real question. That's what's going on. Somebody gonna be mad. This nigga, you, you danced that. around you that a little you bit. Know, and somebody gonna be hey, flat out. I got I got there's there's one there's one woman. I can see somebody watching this shit. There's one woman who I have who I have my sights set on. I know. And because of that, there's no there's no okay. So you got a girl pretty much. No. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you alone. Alright. <laughs> okay, and um, other than that, I mean, let's say, what about any type of giving back as far as like Phoenix? Phoenix? Yeah. What you got going yeah. with that? Um, well, I mean, I'm always, always, always Phoenix. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We talked about this off air. Um, so, I mean, that's my, that's my main objective. Uh, in my career so far, I'm definitely moving towards um, making more of a of a worldwide, you know, presence. Mm -hmm. um, but my main main thing has been really trying to cultivate Phoenix. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So shine moment. So um, that's that's the main thing, and and so I try to give back in in many ways other than just the charities. Like I talk about the charities. I like to do charities. I'm a part of. Um, this company called Grateful, where um, and and we do a bunch of um, events and charity work with the kids. Oh yeah, she. Um, yeah, I got that. So we're gonna talk about the business stuff. I got yeah. Grateful. I got Pure Earth. Yeah. Better, different, visionary. Yeah. Sound like you've been making a lot of business moves. So we're gonna talk yeah, about bro, all that's that. What's, that's what that's what that's what it's been, man. It's just been um, it's just been plotting, bro, and 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 starting my businesses and and you know figuring out different areas that I want to to tap into in order to change the culture in my in my city for real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. like there's so many things. Like I want to run for office. You know what I mean? Ooh, Sean. Oh, Sean. So, oh, yeah. All right, now we got to spend some time talking about that. Yeah. yeah. What do you want to run for in office to begin? Um, I haven't decided yet, but I mean, I'm going to definitely start big. You got to run to a, move to a small city and run for mayor. No, I mean, why would I do that when I'm the fixed guy and I could just run for office here? You want to run for mayor in Phoenix? Maybe. Oh, Ooh, that's big. We know the mayor of El Mirage, Yeah, but um, that's the thing, though, because El Mirage is not too far outside of Phoenix, but yeah. it's easier to infiltrate like that. That's why I said that. Like, if, no, you, if you run for mayor of Goodyear, mayor of Buckeye, mayor here, of... Here's my thing, though. My, my thing... Okay, so let me give you an analogy, right? There's a whole world of artists who know that there's a one percent chance one out of every 100 rappers mm -hmm. will get on the radio not, hey real okay, shit. Right? that's real and so what they do is they decide to they decide to focus their attention on being successful on a smaller scale so they can so they can get their money you know what i'm saying they yeah. can get their bread and because like you said it's easier to to penetrate that market. But politics is different, bro. Yeah. But 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 when it came to when it came to that exact uh when it came to that exact um I don't know what you would call it. Basically what I'm saying is that's like that's striking gold. Like getting getting a song getting a song on the radio in twenty eighteen and not being on a label yeah. is striking gold. So True. I did everything that I could prior to having a opportunity to get on the radio, mm -hmm. to be prepared, to be prepared for the moment when I was when I had the opportunity to yeah. get on the radio. I see what you're so saying. So where I'm at with this is I have all these situations set up, right? That are very in the very stage one, you know? Mm -hmm. All these things are in stage one. Um, well, not all of them. Some of them are in stage one. And these are the things that are preparing me to be ready for that opportunity when the big opportunity comes yeah. so that I can jump in. I see what you mean. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's it's half strategy and it's half dreaming. Yeah, you know nah. what I'm saying? I know what you mean, but only from a political standpoint because politics is totally different. I feel And you. it's called politics for a reason because once you get in... You're in. Mm -hmm. So all you need is a title in politics. It don't matter if you're the mayor of Takahashi, some bullshit city that don't even exist. Yeah. All it matters is you coming in with the title. 
they automatically engage you as a politician, a serious one. No, I feel you. And they know automatically, like, oh shit, he right here in this city. I mean, Phoenix is coming next. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Well, here's here's another here's another idea. I might by the time, cause I'm talking about like after I'm like 35. Maybe, yeah. Right? So by the time this even comes around, I might be in a space where it's more like. You see what's happening to the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. It's everything's being infiltrated. Everything's sure. coming down. So I might be in a space where it's more like on some vigilante shit. You know what I'm saying? Where it's more like we don't need. You got enough a of an online pop. following. You can do that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it might even be just like on some, you know, just, just speaking for the city and representing the city from in a different way because yeah. politics might even be a little bit irrelevant then yeah you know what i'm saying yeah, you build it bro it's trust starting me to they will come now. yeah if you build it they will come Flat like 100 percent. Yeah. it's so. just as simple as that but um all right let's talk music a little bit let's do it i just wanted to catch up with you because obviously like let's i said more music here too. gotta give them another shine moment just for coming through and fucking with us when we was young niggas in the hood you know <laughs> doing what we had to do <laughs> and Back we, when you was young niggas last year. Yeah, <laughs> nah, but you know what's funny though? Willie let us do that podcast at the studio, but that was a blessing. Like, yeah, we ain't had no fucking spaces to go to at yeah, that shout time. Out to Willie. Shout out to Willie, man, for real, for real. Even though he's trying to stir shit up. <laughs> but we gonna get to all that bullshit. Yeah, but um, <laughs> Willie be fucking. Strong, he be having bro. fun with that shit nowadays, bro. I'm telling you, he be really having fun get with the, that shit. Like, get the strap. <laughs> get the strap. <laughs> oh man. All right, but um, I'm like I don't, I don't have a strap, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, shout out to you, man. We gonna talk about that shit. But um, all right. So music, new album on the way. Sincerely, to come in October first. So. We're going to talk about some of the singles from there, but just the project as a whole, kind of just like how he was asking about your creative process. Talk about what the creative process for this album was specifically, and yeah. what are your hopes for to come out of it when it drops? The creative process, like I said, was just really just getting like a batch of beats from Q because we knew we had all this music coming and there was a little bit of a gap that was just like, let's put something out in this gap, right? Mm -hmm. And so he gave me he gave me a nice batch of twenty beats. I rapped on eight of them and sent it to Bootleg Kev. And he sent me back some shout outs. We put it together, and now you have it. It's probably three working weeks total that we put Shine this album together. You know what I'm saying? Like as far as just over the last three months, just like stepping in the studio here, I've probably been in here seven times to do this whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. We just put it together on some Jay Z shit, on some like four 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 shit. Oh, you recorded it out here? Yeah, shout out to Digi Labs yeah, most too. Of it. Yeah, know? shout out to G Digi Labs and my sponsors as well. Um, but yeah, we recorded most of it here. Okay. And uh, and Tony Tony Chalk mixed it too. He's he's an amazing mixer and engineer. So. Oh, you know what? Shout out to Tony Chalk. I seen his aside uh, from just being a producer. I seen his logo on the back of this thing. Tony Chalk is actually a great person, great human being. I haven't got to hang out with him a lot, but every time I did. No, he's a great producer. Energy, he's not know? a great human being. He's not. He's, he's an fun. asshole. <laughs> <laughs> nah, his music's fire, though. I feel like he's helped Brown Boy Maj out a lot. Yeah, that's so. the guy. He's helped me out. He produced light work. Yeah? Yeah. What? Yeah. Shine moments. Some what? Phoenix shit I didn't know yeah. about. I didn't know that neither. That's a big ass record to yeah. produce. Goddamn, Tony. Yeah, I'd, I'd give my pinky toe to Tony. Hey, Pat, you heard Yap Yap? Um, no, I haven't. I haven't. But you I, 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 hey, you sleep in for one. All right, but that's the that single. Yeah, right. yeah. So talk to us about the single. Yeah, yeah. And um, where do you? Because I see that having a lot of. And I mean, I mean, the album is dope as fuck. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But the single I see having just a different title potential. Mm -hmm. Just because how simple-minded people are, and I could see you tailored that kind of just for them around the chorus. Even though the bars ain't like that, mm -hmm. but just around kind of the premise of the song. Yeah. So what do you really want to do with that? What type of radio stations are you looking to infiltrate? What type of markets are you trying to hit with that song? Um, so, Yap Yap, like I said, we've been putting putting together music for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And Yap Yap came together, another shout out to Tony Chalk, another Tony Chalk beat. Tony Chalk, yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, and then and then Q came in and did his thing over it. I rocked it a little bit over it too. Tony Talk Box did a little bit over it. Um, so shout out to all of them. Um, yap Yap is like probably two years old um i was i was in the studio with tony and he was playing these he was playing his first beats that he ever two made. two years old bro wow two years old wow yeah 
He was playing his first beats that he ever made on Ableton because like he was switching over from FL to Ableton, right? Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, bro, these beats are whack. Like, like these are just my first ones. I'm just figuring it out. Mm -hmm. And he played like the skeleton beat for Yap Yap. It was like a loop, like yeah. four bars, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And he's like, yeah, and he, play, he played this one. This happened, with, I think this happened with Lightwork too and like another song too, right? This always happens with Tony. Like we, he thinks his shit's whack mm -hmm. and then I'll take it and we just make it some yeah. shit. <laughs> so... <laughs> so he's like, yeah, yeah, he skips through this one. And I'm like, no, 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 go back. And the, and the reason why is because Tony Chalk has this, um, he has this, this feeling that he, that he pulls out of yeah. his chords when he, when he plays certain chords to where, it's like, to, you. to where it's like, he's not even, he's not even aware of it. He's, he sees that what he's playing is simple, but he doesn't, he doesn't know that he's giving us a feeling that we're not used to by that, by those, by those chords. So, and that's just like me, like being introspectively like into that shit, you know what I mean? But, um, so I heard it and I was just like, yo, like this, this is ridiculous. Like I have, I have a course already, it's like five minutes and I started, you know, we get high in the low, feel low. And all of a sudden he was like, damn, this yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, beat already. hard all of a sudden. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like all of a sudden the beat, the beat starts sounding harder than and shit. And then, you know, it was sold. So, um, what I really wanted to do with the song is make something that was relevant to the time we're in right now. Mm -hmm. And it was damn near, because it was two years ago, it was damn near ahead. Like it was damn near like made a little bit early and before the shit really hit the fan. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was thinking like, you know, we block out the noise, we don't listen to that yap yap. You could easily just make like a nice like, you know, getting high, you know, as you hit the pen, pure yeah. pen. A nice getting high get song, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like a nice little Wiz Khalifa jammer, you know what I mean? Just just chill out. But my thing has always been to balance the yin and the yang and incorporate the fun, bounce, not think so much mentality of music mm -hmm. with information and feeling and substance and emotion and mashing it together to make some sort of stew. Almost yeah. like almost like when you um almost like when you're trying to get like a a, a dog to eat uh, to eat like medicine. Mm -hmm. And so you gotta like put the medicine in like a a, a hot dog or something <laughs> and then give it to the dog. Like that's kinda what it is, you know what I mean? Like, Word up. Person, Shine moment for that analogy. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that was deep in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like the chorus and the beat is the hot dog and shit. Like yeah. everybody's just like, oh okay, yeah. cool, it's a hot dog. Like I fuck with hot dogs. Like yeah. you know what I mean? And um, which I don't, only vegan ones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but get your sandwich in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then the, the medicine is, you know what I'm saying, the information in it and that's, you know, I really wanted to touch on police brutality, which was one of the biggest things that I touched on in the song, you know. Uh, pop, pop, all I hear is pop, pop, yelling, screaming, running, ducking, fucking with the cops, cops, when we on that highway, riding in that drop top, we be yelling, don't shoot, they be hearing yap, yap. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, hey, you know, but you don't, shy moment for that, yeah. man. Hey. And, and it's hidden in melody and, and, yeah. and you know what I'm saying? So that's just that's just like what, I, what I've, come to be like after coming from a band and, and growing up with my grandparents and like soul and oldies and shit and and then you know Nelly being my favorite rapper when I was younger yeah. like it all encompasses wait Nelly was your me. favorite rapper was you Nelly young? was my favorite rapper can I my... give you a quiz real quick sure mm, you can find me in St. Louis hey. where the gun play it rained all day nah 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 some got jobs and some sell yay Others just smoke and fuck all day. Like, wait, 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 wait. You wanna act like you gotta go into the verse a little bit. Home of the red box. Say the end of the day. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Say the end of the day when I'm done for us. See you later, maybe not because I got something high in the alligator's hand. Okay, okay. Alright, keep going, bro. My bad. So that was my nigga, right? So, you know, Melody. Uh, melody. N Nelly was ill with the with the melody. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And, and well, really, let's let's be honest. Murphy Lee was ill with the melody. So far. And 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 he helped Nelly. But um, regardless, man, like they were making some amazing amazing music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's what I wanted to capture with this record, bro. Mm -hmm. It's like that Nelly feel that like when like when I used to be just like 
with my friends and we would we going down down baby it didn't even matter what it meant we didn't know what the <laughs> yeah. like, he was like hey sweet streeper baby cock ready yeah. to let it go shimmy shimmy go go pup light it up and take a pup pass it to me now you know what i'm saying like this nigga was was on one like, yeah he was like yo let's get it you know what i mean but that's that's really what inspired it is all those like moments in my life and information that I've gathered. I wanted to put it into one song that was universal and not as not as uh, adolescent sounding as possible. Yeah. Because it still has the adolescent sound to it. It still has that like you know kid feel to it where it's like ah like it's all good you know. Yeah. But that's the beautiful the, part though. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, then it has that grit to it where it's like okay like. It, it, it's almost like having a little bit of light work and a little bit of possible in one song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, shine moment for that. And um, before you, or go ahead, what was you about to say? No, 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 I wasn't about to say nothing. I was just going to say, like, that was a dope way to put the record. Bro, yeah. but um, you got a daughter. Oh, yeah. My daughters love possible. Both oh, yeah. of them. So I feel like you kind of just captured how to captivate the children. And that's yeah. a fucking hell of a quality to have. Yeah, flat out. That's on some other bro. next level. You know what I mean? My nigga, my daughter was excited as hell to meet you. <laughs> she, just, she just put the hands in the sky. Yeah. She just knew the shit. Man, so let me tell you about that. That that comes from that comes from a couple of things. That comes from A, my connection with my daughter. And us just being like such best friends mm. that I just know, I know how a young kid thinks almost. Like, you know what yeah, I'm saying? That's like, the shine moment. Like, y'all. I, like yeah. I kind of like, I don't even want to say come down to that level. I want to say go up. Shine moment again. You start, you you got the world figured out. Because the kids know much more than the adults. They don't overall, but as far as making, changing the world, the kids know more than the adults. The, oh, is, yeah, yeah, the world is so corrupted. If everybody thought like children, it would it would take time to fix because of the corruption it would it would glitch you know what i'm saying but the way the kids think is the real way you're supposed to think nigga. you know what i'm saying it's just, nigga. it's just being shy moment for real. i want you to go in depth a little bit more on that because and i don't want to spend too much time because we're going to go into the bins but let's because bro the way kids think and it's undisciplined so you, you yeah. really can't give it any true credence but the way they think is the way to change the world in yeah. the future. And I truly believe that. And, and the only thing I want to touch on that really quick is the reason why I do agree with that is because I feel like these kids, like, they don't necessarily have a conscience. And if they do, it hasn't been through enough to really tell them right from wrong. So they're thinking out of pure enjoyment or mm -hmm. pure in the moment and as adults we have a whole bunch of things like we're scared we're scared yeah, we're exactly. all scared like like don't, don't do this don't do this we're scared the bills ain't gonna yeah. get paid yeah, yeah. we're scared but a kid that. doesn't know about bills so they're only worried about like you know yeah. like whatever being happy, you know, being happy yeah absolutely be the best idea so i yeah. like that you said that that's yeah, a big time moment man yeah so yeah. that's hell of a quality man and i hope you keep exercising that i hope it gets even bigger for you if that's the case i'm a student of life bro you you should be coming out some children books soon because that's the people who really get not and not that rich is the thing to be or it is the thing to be but not that that's what we're looking for but that's just the nigga school shit. You come out with some fly ass children books. You want to talk about old. children's books? We can talk about children's books. I have you one. got one? I got See, one. You already on the path. Talk no. about it a little bit. That's dope. Don't give us too much then if it's next year. Yeah, I'm not going to give you too much. Um, but I will say that I wrote a, I wrote a song. Actually, I Rock helped me with this song. He um he brought it to Shout me. Shout out to I Rock. Shout man. out to I Rock, man. That's my OG. But um, he brought it to me. And I'm not going to say the name of it yet. But um, we made this amazing record that's just this world-changing, Grammy-worthy, like, type shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, I, made a, I made a children's book around it. Something just, you know, the best way I can put it is just, like, spirit. Like, kind of just, like, came over me and, and just kind of led me to it. Yeah. And... I, deci I had decided that I wanted to um, write a children's book like sometime right before we made that song. And I think that, I think that how it happened was I was listening to the song and I was just like, man, like this, this right here is kind of like 
a, a story in itself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, what could this like, what could this be about? And I just went on this like journey, and there may have there may have been some narcotics involved, <laughs> <laughs> but to help you get there, you gotta, Sorry, you, gotta, you gotta get there. But regardless, and, I, mean, and I may have been in Amsterdam, but so they're not narcotics. If it's Amsterdam, they're not narcotics. Oh yeah, so it was just like you know. With the way of life, but okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I wrote I wrote the book in like one night, and yeah, and now it's now it's going through production, and that leads to my company, Better Different Visionary Group. Um, that's who I'm dropping, I'm dropping everything under. Um, so we started that two years ago as well, mm -hmm. um, and it's just been about you know building the infrastructure and making sure that when I, you know. That the children's book and the music and the um, um, the humanitarianism and the uh, just everything, making sure it all coincides yeah. properly because we, we have to create a story for people. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So um, it's we're just working, man. We're yeah, working. No, that's big, bro. Because see, I'm not the right one too. But when we turn on the TV, the only people that we see that look like, not the only, because it's changing now, but it's, it used to be the only people who we would see on the TV who looked like us were athletes or musicians. Mm -hmm. Or someone fucking up. Shine moment, real shit. Yeah, and that's an unshine shine moment, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 but the information is to yeah. shine that, you know what I'm saying? So, that's, that's the way that that black people were were raised not raised but just how we perceive success yeah you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so like i want to i want to run for office more so to be an influence than i do to even change anything that's a shine moment bro hey we're fucking with you right now for real yeah. for real I mean, Real, but I just be I just be putting thoughts out. There. Yeah, no, nah, but from the get go, like, bro, you got a different type of mind. I like cerebral type of people who are on a deeper thinking. Like I tell people, a lot of people they're not on my level intellect, but you right there with me. <laughs> what I do want to know, and you segued right into this, so shout out to Better Different. Thank I want you. you to shout out some of the sponsors and things. And did Pira give us any flour? Let me get a little. You know what I'm saying? So Pira, <laughs> Pira is. Um, <laughs> Shout out to Pure Earth. Um, we just did a we just did a sponsorship deal with them. Um, we're gonna be announcing and coming out with a, a really a really ill product for everybody very soon, and it's gonna definitely be like some like some next level Arizona's never had some shit like this type shit. Mm -hmm. just, just like being on the radio, like you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like it's gonna be like a, it's gonna be just like a big thing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because branding and and it's like when it's like when uh, Ye was was switching from Nike to Adidas, mm -hmm. and he was saying like the reason why he was doing it is because Nike didn't want to give him royalties; they just wanted him to be like the face of a Yeezy, and then like have nothing else to do with it. And that's kind of I'm taking that mentality, an owner's mentality. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shine moment. And okay. and I'm going about things with infrastructure, slowly but steady. Going about things with infrastructure, infrastructure that will um, allow me and my friends and my family and and even people hopefully that I don't know one day to be influenced and to be taken care of because awesome. of the way we did it. That's big, man. You know, what you I'm got saying? a big vision, bro. I love visionary. That's yeah. a big fucking vision to have. It's Better just a visionary group, bro. Like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's what it is. And you're gonna pull it off too. I got big faith you're gonna pull that shit off. Bro, I I all I do, like, all I do is live this shit. Like, I've never stopped even asked the Nah nigga. Thing. That like, that's never stopped since I was fifteen years old, bro. Like I haven't stopped for a moment. You know what I mean? And it starts with my it starts with my mom, bro. Like it just starts with that. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like she was twenty she was twenty three, I think. When when she when she passed and it's like, fuck that, bro. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying. Like I'm 29 and I've lived. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. I'm 29 and I've lived. Like I can say that. I can say that comfortably. Like I've traveled the world. I've I've affected people's lives. Like 
Like, my mom did her job, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And so I got to just continue to, like, make sure that that's the case. 23, bro. You know what I mean? So yeah. I just got to make sure that that's the case forever. That's real. Okay. So, um, and then is there anything else you're doing as far as the business or investments, anything you're jumping into? Um, yeah, I got a company called Grateful. I think a lot of people probably know about them by now. We've done a lot of stuff together. Um, uh, am I forgetting anything? Change Your Stars, that's my boy Fraser's, um, his uh, foundation, that's where I do all my charity work for, I'm on the board for them. Mm -hmm. So um, whenever you see me like with the kids and stuff, only it's for that. Um, but yeah, man, just the collaboration with Pure Earth. Unfortunately, they didn't give us flour because they're actually a, a concentrate company. Oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. So that's why it's the pans yeah. and the wax and all that stuff. So, okay. so I got to yeah. talk to Tyler about that. <laughs> yeah, you got to talk to Tyler okay. about the tree. That's the tree <laughs> okay. So. Well, yeah. oh, actually, fuck it. It's uh, everything legal nowadays, even if it's illegal. Don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but, um. Oh, bro, I'd be out here just doing whatever the hell I want. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, it. Nigga, yeah. until I that's die, you. man. That's until you. I that's die. That's until that's the you. day that I die. See, Pat, what you got to say about that, man? What do I have to say? Live your life. Bro, you got to definitely live your life, bro. Like, if you living for somebody else, you just, you know, probably dislike yourself. You know what I mean? Or you dislike, dislike everybody else. Either way, it's a problem. Yeah. The funny thing is, when I started chilling out and, like, like started, like, smoking weed on the street and, like, fucking... And, like, <laughs> that sounded like smoking crack. Smoking <laughs> no, no, weed on I the mean, street. like, smoking weed, right, like... Right in the middle of the two yellow lanes. I'm like, on the street with it, like, nigga, what's up? Killing it. But, nah, but, like, so, like, you know what I mean? Like, since I started just relaxing and not, like, being so, like, uptight about, like being like in trouble about shit and stuff like that and just realizing like I'm just out here in the world living like whatever's supposed to happen gonna happen. And, like I've been in I haven't been in no trouble and in, in no kind of like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like he was breaking down weed at the sound check for the Arizona Hip Hop Christmas. You know what I'm saying? So he like, dead ass serious. I just I just I just breaking down weed and went and smoked the joint in the middle of the sound check. So he You wanna know what what, yeah. what taught me that is living in LA. Mm -hmm. Is because that's kinda like it's a I hate to say this, but LA is a higher frequency. Just be real. Yeah. Nah, don't yeah. hate to say yeah. it, just say it. Well, I mean, no, I hate to say it though because it's my city. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, and, and that's why that's why I'm doing that's why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. Is because I'm here to raise the frequency <laughs> yeah. of the city. Like, there's a reason why God chose me to to be spun on power ninety eight point three years. You know what I'm saying? It's because Power, think about it, like that's a frequency, power ninety eight point three in general. Like that's a, a frequency. Huge fucking frequency. You know what I'm saying? So like that's that's meant to happen for a reason. Like I'm meant to touch these kids' lives and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? And 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 their parents even, like what's happening is the parents and the kids are connecting through this song. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's ill. Like they come to see me and they're like they take a picture with me and they're both equally like Lit, you know what yeah. I'm saying about it. Yeah, yeah, that's so me and my like, daughter. So it's just, it's just cool, man. But um, but yeah, bro, it's just, it's just how things have to be, you know. Yeah, it's just how things have to be. Nah, big time. All right, now, the one thing that we are gonna talk about, which is crazy, because, and I'm a, I want us give me a little time so I can make this shit sound the best way I can make it sound. Mm -hmm. So I give a little disclaimer. For one, this interview was planned even before. I knew I was about to do an interview with Futuristic. Facts. Because I, I was going to do one at his crib already with Lacey K, but I didn't have one planned with him. But then he ended up agreeing to the one pretty much the day before we did it. So, Collins had already planned this interview out. We was just been talking about the promo and the music and what was coming up and shit like that. But so, just yesterday, and this is talking podcast terms, we dropped the Futuristic interview the full thing you know so today we dropping the Collins interview but we talked to Futuristic a little bit and I don't want to call it bullshit because I don't know the whole thing but so I don't want to say let's get into the bullshit but I want to say let's just get into what he had to say mm -hmm. for the most part and um, I feel like and I don't know the situation I can tell that there's history though because I can see some emotion behind it and he was kind of speaking his piece mm -hmm. overall is what I seen but it me being from the streets, I'm the type of nigga I'm fighting anybody, just just <laughs> regardless. Like we fight, we just gotta fight. But y'all don't gotta fight at all, but just if somebody was talking like that, it would seem like some bullshit. But to me it seemed like more of something went wrong. So where like 
where did the problems occur, kind of, from your perspective between you and uh, Futuristic? And shout out to him because to me, he's a dope dude, just like you a dope dude. That nigga been killing it. Yeah. That nigga been killing it. Um, there's so much to it. It's like, especially after seeing what, like, what he had to say, it's, it's really hard to tackle the whole thing. Yeah, but, take um, your time. But, but I will. Um, I would say it started with uh, it started with the with the city's tension mm -hmm. because you know how things are still a little bit but used to be way more and we talked about this on the lot the last podcast yes, sir. Um, just the the energy of Phoenix and and the music scene at least the hip hop music scene and just the tension and the clicks and the this person don't fuck with this person and how he was he was even talking about like you know. This person said he don't fuck with me, and so I was feeling this way and blah blah blah. My mentality, as as Bruce Wayne, as the the person who grew up in Phoenix and was molded by this city, is someone who wanted to mend everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So not not necessarily worry about any one person's you know particular agenda which is where i think that i probably could have uh calculated a little bit better is is um being more being more conscious being more conscious of every individual's you know what i'm saying um feelings towards it but my thought my thought process with it was okay there's all this tension going on um uh v apparently said something about zach i don't know if that's true or not um we're hearing you know you go somewhere and you find out this person's hating on you and then fucking me and zach we're kind of clipped up so um So my perspective was, Khalid dropped a song called Humble Pie, okay? And he's kind of just like spazzing. Mm -hmm. He's spazzing on all kinds of shit, right? And in a way, it's kind of like directed towards like me and Zach and like the people who are, do are doing stuff and he's one of them and shit, you know what I'm saying? Kind of just like, yo, shh, like, like, you know what I mean? And me, my mentality is like, no, like, fuck humble pie. Like, we need to be out here like gods. Mm. You know what I'm Burn. saying? Like we, need, like, we need to be out here like, you know what I mean? Like, did you ever see, like, videos of Drake before he blew up in Toronto? Like, this nigga, like, this nigga thought he was six god already. Like, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like, and I think, I think I was kind of going around with the mentality at the time that was really rubbing people the wrong way. Um, and that mentality is transparency, okay? So, I've always been extremely transparent. I've always been, I've always been that person who doesn't want to dilly-dally around the like, hoopla and shit and like all like the fake like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if we, like, we're, if we're fucking with each other, it's like, we all the way fucking with each other, we family, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Arizona versus everybody song. And Zach, first off, you have to realize, Zach agreed to be on the song, first off. Okay, so first he agreed to be on the song. Then his manager, I don't remember his name. His manager, oh my God, his manager hates me, bro. So, um, his manager was like, nah, fuck that. Like, V's hating on you, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, those other niggas are just gonna, like, capitalize off it. Like, make our, we'll make our, Bootleg Kev had been doing a lot for me and for Zach at the time, and Bootleg had just, just, just started, like, managing me, right? Mm -hmm. Not, uh, maybe he didn't just start managing me, he might have been managing me. But, um, regardless, uh, I remember being in there and mixing that song and bootleg just being like really upset because it was like, we're gonna do this every Arizona versus everybody song 
we got this reach for the stars, shoot for the stars mentality for Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And Bootleg Kev is the one person who can kind of plug that to the world and be like, okay, like, we're actually like, we're doing one too, and it's like actually fly, and we have some rappers that are doing something and have clout and are gain, gaining mm -hmm. popularity. And then the most popular one backs out. Mm -hmm. So, and, and he's helping him too, you know what I'm saying? So, with my loyalty to Bootleg Kev, I'm like, okay, like, what's the move now? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, now what? And so I'm like, yo, let's end this shit once and for all. Like, let's, let's put an end to this shit. Like, I'm going to talk about everything that's going on in this city on one record. Right? Mm -hmm. And make everybody, because we're not getting together in person. Everybody's too fucking scary for all that shit. Mm -hmm. So let's all get our consciousnesses together you know what i'm saying if mm -hmm. you will and let's let's <coughs> let's let that thing steam you know what i'm saying like let's let's roast on it and um kendrick control had just come out at the time mm -hmm. so it was kind of like this like it was just this melting pot of a lot of things that were just saying do it mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying um <coughs> and it felt like the right thing to do. It felt like, okay, if you do this, Phoenix is going to come together because, and they're gonna, like, niggas are gonna be mad. Like, of course, you know what I'm saying? But these are your boys. I was the one person who everyone fucked with. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's because my OG, I Rock. Shout out to I Rock. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, n like, no one's gonna not fuck with I Rock's artists. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm me. Like, I was made to be that person. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, let's get everybody in one room sonically, and I'm going to be the one that's like, yo, elephant out the room. What the fuck's going on, y'all? Like, y'all need to talk about this shit. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Everybody talk about this shit. And so that was me on the track, right? So I get on talk my shit, and um, I, I say some shit about Hannibal. I say some shit about V. I say some shit about Khalid. Who else was on the song? Um, I, don't, I don't remember, but um, and I say some shit about Zach. And I get it. Zach was the the last one, and I kind of it was like a little bit more like umph to it. But what did you say? They had him. Um... I said, um, I said if I was you, I would be happy for me. I would be happy for V, and then I'd show him who the man is. And then I said. Uh, something about I don't know something about panicking. Like after that, it was just like bars. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? And um, I it just I just rubbed in the wrong way because it was me. Mm -hmm. But that's because I realized now that's because I was closest to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So me with my mentality thinking that that's the one relationship I don't gotta worry about in this situation because that's my like that's my bro. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like. We can settle it however, like you said, like like you you with if it's someone you throw hands yeah, or whatever, right, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, like sure. you just figure it out. Yeah. Like you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I can't tell you how many times I've been in fucking situations where we got disagreements and then we're fucking best friends again. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like that's what being best friends is about. Yeah, you know what I'm moment. Yeah. So um so he's the one person I'm like, uh, oh, like Zach will get over it. Like Zach will yeah. he'll rap at me and say some shit and then like I'll be like, all right, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This wasn't really even like about you, this was more so for the city, like, yeah. all right. But um, but he took that and he, he made his thing. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I expected. Like, yeah. I was like, sweet, like, you killed that shit. Like, yeah. there was some- You said that on the first one. Okay. Yeah, I was like, I was like, there was some false statements, you know what I'm saying? Like, you like, you're saying a lot of stuff that ain't true, mm -hmm. but for the most part, what you did and how you did it was fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, there's so many dynamics to this. I feel like I'm like already past some stuff, but like there's so many things I have to go back to. Um, um, tell you time, you but, gotta, oh, or not. One thing I want to say is, and we talked a little bit off camera, but I want to bring it a little bit on camera because. I feel like for one, y'all would be better together. And I feel like two, this would be a chance to maybe bring light to a dark situation. But even if not, what the fuck ever. I'm, I'm with whatever. But 
I feel like it's more of a thing where there's just been no closure. You know, and w even when he was saying something like, oh, I gave you a career, well, I, I don't think he felt like that. I think he just felt like maybe he... I can get into the closure thing, too, though. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of aspects to it that people just don't under... Here's the thing, bro. This man is... First off, let's, let's shout him out because he has done some great things. Like, this man, I heard what, it was like over 150,000 units he's sold or some shit. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, shine on it, man. So, um, with that being said, though, you know, there was definite. Okay, I say I say the one hundred fifty thousand thing to say he's a smart guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a smart man we're talking about. This isn't like I know you're saying like there's like emotions involved and stuff like that, but this man is smart. Like he he's strategic, mm -hmm. you know, and. Um, so there's a lot of things that are that are left out from my end that is like, yo, there's a million times where that could have been something completely different in result. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or there's a million times where uh, you perceived it that way because so-and-so's in your ear. You know what I'm saying? When really I'm just over here doing this. So let me go back to, to one thing. I have... Um, I'm the one artist in Phoenix with a song on the radio, right? Mm -hmm. And Bootleg Kev's managing me, he's working for the radio. I have this song called Listen mm -hmm. on the radio. It's the first song I got in rotation. And, um, you know, Zach's the biggest rapper in the city, you know? And me and him are rolling, rolling around doing our thing. Meanwhile, he thinks, I don't, know, I don't know if he really thinks he introduced me to Bootleg Kev or if he's just saying that, but he didn't introduce me to Bootleg Kev. Mm -hmm. I Rock Daniels introduced me to Bootleg Kev. Mm -hmm. um, King Los came in for a uh, for an interview, and it's actually a legendary interview now, mm -hmm. um, where he freestyles for like fucking ten minutes with Bootleg, mm -hmm. and I'm the one filming it. I think I seen that, bro. That's crazy. So I'm filming it. I was pretending to be an intern. It's when Rock first started managing me, mm -hmm. and that was so I would go into power with them and meet Bootleg. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's how I met Bootleg Kev. I rock a cold motherfucker. I rock's the coldest. Like, that's he's the OG, bro. No. Like he's Bootleg has a little cousin named Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Chelsea was the number one fan of my rock band. Mm -hmm. If you got a little cousin and you're a radio host and she's coming up to you saying, I know this rock band and they're fucking awesome and blah 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 you're gonna be like Nigga, if you don't shut the hell up, like, I'm a professional, I don't want to hear about your little rock band, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. And so, Bootleg knows me as Kyle Collins from this rock band, mm -hmm. right? So, when Futuristic met him before me, he told him about, about me. And when he told him about me, Bootleg's like, oh, Kyle, that guy? No, that shit's corny, like, he's whack, like, that's, that's garbage. Then, I bring him a record. Well, I'm not even going to say then. He's talking about the band, mm -hmm. right? And that's all he knows. It's from Chelsea. It's from his little cousin. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking four or five years of this while he was in Vegas, not even when he was at Power. Like, he's hearing about us mm -hmm. and shit. So, I semi-know him. And so, fast forward, I meet him at the station with IROC. IROC's like, yo, can we, get, can we get on on one of these Sunday nights? He started doing Sunday nights, um, like freestyles and like interviews with local artists and shit. He's like, uh, can I get my artist on one of these Sunday nights? He's like, sure, send me a record, we'll do it. I'm like, cool, so I sent him this record. And um, it was a remix to Mercy. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yo, this shit hard. Mm -hmm. like, this shit's stupid, like, you do this too? Oh, you shit. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, okay, here's my thing. I'll say this, like, I'll look everybody in the eyes so y'all know I'm not fucking around. Like, I sincerely apologize for making him feel any type of way and not knowing where his boundary was. Mm -hmm. I sincerely apologize. That's a shy moment. That's a Like, I, I definitely, that was my bro. Like, that was mm -hmm. my brother. Like, I considered him that. That's why we're both, and he's feeling any type of way. Like, mm -hmm. So, I definitely apologize for the way I made him feel. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, what I was trying to accomplish happened. 
Phoenix is evolved. Phoenix is closer after that moment. And it took the sacrifice of us in that moment to kind of make Phoenix kind of have this like epiphany moment that um, that we're real. Like we're, we're a real industry with real artists who have situations. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and they start caring about it. And, shit. Mm. and then I'm performing light work on stage mm. on one side. You know how they got the two things in the DJ booth? I'm, perform I'm performing light work. I'm handing the mic to him to perform the greatest. Right? We in here fucking vibing. Right? So, as far as my team is concerned, we like, we good. Yeah. We just rocked the stage. Like, we just got fucked up together again. Like, mm -hmm. we're good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I ever thought that he wasn't over it, like, that's when I realized he was over it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Like, we're here. Like, we're good. And um, then he just kind of goes ghost on me and kind of on the city, right? And, but then, but he also starts to like, get some momentum going too. Yeah, no, So it's kind of like, so it's kind of like, he leaves and this tsunami builds, this light work tsunami builds. So, as time's going by, it's becoming more of a tsunami. So, I know, I know that he's gotta be like, why the fuck ain't that me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, which I get it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I t like I'm prepared for this. Mm -hmm. You're prepared for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why you're winning in it. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I'm going to win at this, mm -hmm. even though it's a slow roast. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, he, he started to blow up a little bit. The nerve raps thing came out. And I think that the timing of him blowing up and coming off of that and the whole whirlwind of all that, it turned into something, man. It turned into something and like, he was different from then on to, to me, like, you know what I'm saying? But um, probably May of that year or something like that, later on that year, we just, we just don't hear from him. Like, I hit him up every now and then. We might just, like, what's up text, but mm -hmm. not, nothing really, not how we used to be. And um, I'm like, why, like, why, like, why is that? The next thing you know, we see um, some clip come out on the internet of him at his album release show, and he's performing the diss song. And they're filming it, and they put it out on the Buff Nerds channel, Futuristic, This Is Sincerely Collins Live, Arizona, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Five months later. You understand? So we're like, what the fuck? Like, what the hell? So now he's fucking, he's up there now. Like, you know what I'm saying at this point? He's making money, he's fucking got, he's got uh, uh, visibility, like he's doing the damn thing. Mm -hmm. What I'm gonna do, diss him now? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what, I'm gonna diss him now? Yeah. Like, you know, so it, he needed to come back. You know what I mean? Like, come back and do what he's doing now. Like, you see, he's, he's working with every single person that I ever had on my team. Like, he's literally working with every... Like I said, he's smart. Like, he knows that not everybody sees everything. So, and he knows how to manipulate the internet. So he's going to come and he's going to do things that's going to plot me to be the villain. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and I, and I get it. Like, you know, going and, and working with my, my family and, like, you know, getting them some clout and stuff like that. Like, that's... that's you talking about, like, Markel? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, just just everyone though. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone, because you know, I'm I'm a fixed guy, bro. Like I talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. Like I don't not fuck with anybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and I don't know nobody who don't fuck with me except for him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So um, he strategically went to certain people, bro. Like, you know what I mean? And it's just like for me, it's just like, like, you know what I mean? Like, okay, like I, it is what it is. You know, but um, that's that is my perspective of it, though. You know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's my perspective. Is just is just coming in it super overly authentic, and then 
just seeing uh, just seeing how dynamics can affect certain things and steer them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, at the end of the day, bro, like I've never I've never wished that dude nothing but love. Um, as far as dying slow, like you know what I'm saying and shit like that. A little harsh. Yeah, like I don't play around with shit like that. Yeah. So, I mean, from my perspective, I need to know from him: is it this? I don't think it's that. But or I is it that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because either way is fine, but we can't play this like I'm a. I'm a great person and I'm like about the peace and the love and the positivity, but you like over here like really like trying to like fucking like throw sand in the nigga's eyes and shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's fine because I don't have the OG to J Prince me anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now like it's all shots of just, it's just red dots. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like everywhere. But it don't have to be like that. Like it, it could be beautiful. You know what I'm saying? We could hop on a record. I could fucking, you know what I'm saying? Use my relationships to try to get us a fucking single on the radio. Like, why don't people think that? Yeah, Since here. You know what I'm saying? Thank you guys. Y'all are growing. You know what I'm saying? So, shout hey, out you to gonna be back again, oh, yeah. 2019? Oh yeah, you already know. Yeah, we gonna do this all the time, bro. So, it is what it is. All love, bro. Hell yeah. Sure. See, Pat the Monster, how you been holding up, man? How you enjoyed the interview? Hey, I'm doing good. Good. Once again, you know what I'm saying? Like, sincerely, Collins, that was like some real deep, like a deep insight from the main situations that, you know, everybody definitely wanted to hear about. And I'm glad that you executed them that way. You yeah. know what I mean? Shit, so. But you know we real niggas at all times. Yeah, no. Pop Sun Radio, we out to <laughs> bitch. We out to go get a bucket of biscuits and chicken wings, man. Let's go. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? Sincerely, Collins, and you're now tuned in to Pod Sun Radio.